Being an engineer is all about fixing problems. And while most engineers tend to fix problems of the whole humanity, for example you can't cross a river so you build a bridge over it, I, as a not so good engineer, tend to only fix my own problems. And to be honest, mostly create more problems for the rest of the humanity. I'm going to get you through the whole process, in this video you're going to see what I mean. So as you might have seen already, I've been working on making a nerf turret. The problem is that it sucks and I really don't want it to. The whole thing was far too heavy, just a blaster weighs nearly 2 kilograms. The construction of it was also half-assed and wobbly, and to be honest it needs to be whole-assed this time. And while I'm working on it already, I'll try to give it a bit more power. Right now, according to the site, the balls leave the red blaster at around 100 km per hour. According to me and my very scientific testing method, involving shooting it once and eyeballing how much it has moved and in what time it did so, around 130 km per hour. Which is pretty cool, to be honest. Anyway, I'd like my turret to shoot them at around twice that speed. Let's say close to 200 km per hour. Shooting them with twice the speed is going to mean that they are going to have 4 times more energy, which should make them hurt a lot more. And since that's the whole idea behind the project, I'm going to work on it as long as the balls are not flying over 200 km per hour. And this is the part that I want to start with, the blaster, or even more precisely the shooty bit of it. As I said in a previous video, spinning those two motors and placing a ball between them makes it fling the ball as fast as the motors are spinning. The faster the motors spin, the stronger it shoots. Which is nice because that's something I can easily work with by just switching the battery for one with a higher voltage. Thing is, this blaster was expensive and I really don't want to break it, so I bought an old one. This one is much older, and the auction that I have bought it from said that it might not work, so I've risked my $20 and bought it anyway. It came with four and other guns which I have just thrown away as I had no use for them, sadly no footage of it. Coming back to the project, the shooty bit is basically the same between those two, but I wasn't scared to break this one as it was much much cheaper. By just changing the battery to a 24 volt one, I've been able to fling the balls at around 172 km per hour, which is a very nice upgrade. But also, it's incredibly straining on the motor because it sounds as if it's going to give up any second. 170 km per hour is nice, but it's not close enough to my goal for me to be happy with it, so this forces me to make some more drastic changes in the design. And while looking for ideas I found Project FDL. That for over two years already open source project of a pretty cool nerf blaster that caught my eye. I started looking into it and noticed that they are using drone motors as the shooty bit, which is nice, because I've always wanted to try them for myself. But this 5 year old reddit thread says that I could expect around 170 fps, which is 180 km per hour. Closer, but not perfect. However, I'm sure that I can tweak a few parameters and make it shoot faster. With this initial dose of optimism, I started looking for the motors, and using my signature move of looking for stuff that people say is broken, I managed to buy 6 of them for around $50. When they came, they were working, but not super well. They sure needed cleaning and new bearings, so that's what I decided to do. And there, done. They sound much better already. Basic math says that with fully charged battery they should spin at around 30,000 RPM, so I started designing the shoot a bit with that number in mind. Bit more math allows me to calculate the necessary radius of the inertial wheels to shoot the blaster at my wanted speed. And as you can see it needs to be at least 18.5 of a millimeter. Since we are not living in a perfect world, I'll make them a bit bigger and make it closer to 20 milliliters, to just allow for some margin of error. The whole design process was pretty easy, because well, I had two whole blasters lying around and I could just look at them for ideas. 
And also it's just two motors placed close to each other, nothing super complex to be honest. I just had to make sure that the ball would not get stuck on parts of the case, so I've made the cuts for the inertial wheels as small as possible and everything should work just fine. The only problem I had was designing the hopper. I really liked the belt system moving the balls from the hopper to the shooty bit used in the red blaster. And since I thought that it's going to be easy to copy and fun to design, I just started doing it. So my design works, but there's a lot of thinking necessary to make sure that the balls do not get stuck on parts of the hopper. In my last job I have been told multiple times that I'm pretty and don't have to be bright, so that's why I've decided to stop thinking altogether and just go with the trial and error approach. Right now the hopper design works great, but mostly due to this little piece of tape that you can see right here. When it comes to the body of this whole thing, I wanted it to look more simple and consistent this time. I've stuck everything into a big box and called it a day. I think it looks alright. Since I have been making everything from scratch, I've also decided to change the way this whole thing moves. The most annoying problem of the previous turret was the fact that, due to the weight of the whole red blaster, I had to use two motors for the tilt movement. With just one, it would constantly send the motor into error mode and it would be overpowered. That's why I came up with a solution that puts far less strain on the motor. This simple sketch shows you the whole idea behind the movement. You've got a blaster right here attached with a revolutive joint in this spot. By attaching a linkage to the front of the blaster and moving its other end horizontally left and right, I can make the whole thing move up and down. Changing the mounting points, the linkage bar length and the range of movement allows me to both customize how far up and down the turret can go and also how much torque the motor needs to move it. I've played with the set of parameters until I've found one that works well and then designed the rest of the turret while trying to stick to them as best as I could. I'm pretty pleased with the way it turned out, but I really should have thought a bit more about how far the toothed part sticks out. For the next iteration I'm going to move the motor closer to the middle of the bottom plate, which should allow me to make it stick out far less than it does right now. I'll also think about any other solutions to it, because there might be something I'm missing. With all the parts finished, printed and assembled, the whole project looks like this, which in my opinion is much, much better than what it looked like before. To be honest, right now I have even thought about the cable management, which right now makes them not get in the way anymore. Not only does it look better, it's also much more responsive and cool in general, at least in my opinion. I have even fixed the tracking, so right now it's much much better in following my face than it was before. Right, the most important part, which is shooting. It works, just not as I intended it to. Since I'm using the same batteries that the rover is using as my main source of power, it comes with a few problems. The batteries themselves are alright, but the battery management system caps the amount of amps I can get from them at around 10, and since the motors can get up to 40 amps each, it's well, not enough. If I'd try to shoot too many balls in rapid succession, it's going to trip and turn the power off, so yeah, I have to fix that. I could probably just remove the battery management system altogether, but it's going to be problematic because I'm 100% sure that I'm going to forget to ever charge the battery, and it's going to break this way. So the most probable solution is that I'm going to just buy new batteries with higher amp ratings or just switch the BMS for a new one. Still, if I can shoot the blaster at least once, I can check how fast the balls are flying, so let's do it right now. So as you can see, my super scientific method sets the speed of the ball at 52 meters per second, which is exactly 192 kilometers per hour, which is not enough because I've set the goal at 200 kilometers per hour, which annoys me deeply because I did the math, so I'm going to fix it. 